paramedics anyway. Uh, hi, there's a fire here on Golden Springs at a Chevron, and it's at a gas station. It just blew up right now. On February 11, 2018, at approximately 13.30 hours, Los Angeles County Fire Department resources responded to a reported commercial building fire in the city of Diamond Bar. At Golden Springs, west of Brea Canyon, not the gas station. You are going to need southbound Brea Canyon Road uh, shut down. Move. Henry David, I can shut down uh, Brea Canyon Road. Uh, shut down both ways, north and southbound. I want at least uh, uh, a couple hundred yards from this truck. Yeah, 290 Sam, I'm in front of that location now. I will evac. back. Uh, also, while you're over there, I see more pedestrians over where you are. Unknown where the driver is at this time, um, but I don't really want to get that close to the truck to find out. Yeah, copy that. The call for us came in as a commercial building fire. That, as the initial calls were, Chevron gas station commercial building fire. Responding units arrived on scene to find a large tractor trailer well involved, and the call was downgraded to a large vehicle fire. On scene of a tractor trailer fire. Engine 119 and 120 can handle. All of you units cancel. I continued my response, saw smoke, I was close enough, right behind 120s, and rolled in. As incoming units engaged in the firefight, it became evident that the vehicle involved was carrying condensed hydrogen gas. 119, go ahead. Ah. LA 119, can you start? That's not 43 to our location also, please. Uh, I think in this scenario, there was a little bit of lack of awareness as to what initially the product was. This is a very hard thing to recognize as being a very flammable container. The trailer configuration was a little different. Um, I know we've seen on the roadways uh, the semi-trailers, uh, the long uh, tubes, the uh, very obvious markings. I had never seen it before. Uh, it made it challenging because it was a totally different carrier than uh, the first one that I had. You don't normally see a square truck carrying this much flammable stuff inside it. Usually it's a big round tanker. Since we didn't know what we had, leaving the, the, the station until when we got on scene, until we got right next to it, because there was no placards on the front, and as we pulled on the side, I saw the hydrogen. You guys are aware that is compressed hydrogen in there. You want to, I don't know if you want to get a hold of that guy, see if those tanks are full or not. Uh, you got pretty good potential there for hazmat. I know first in was a little bit chaotic, but when is first in not chaotic at a hazmat scene? These guys got it together quick, very quickly. <clears throat> so as we were rolling up, the um, top of the vessels were, were burning off, and I think it was burning the fiberglass material wrapped around the, the cylinders, and there was 25 vessels in there. They were all full. He had just filled up and was going to make a delivery. Each cylinder was approximately two feet in diameter by about 14 foot long, holding about 7,300 uh, PSI worth of hydrogen. And you can let your imagination run with that and how big of an explosion that could potentially be. Once we determined uh, the large amount of cylinders that were involved, we knew that uh, if we did have a catastrophic failure, we had a, a blast radius of approximately a half a mile. It is, even the second time, it is a little unnerving when you come in and you know the properties of hydrogen. It's lighter than air, it's gonna go up. But the problem is, is that it also explodes. You know, like everybody talks about the Hindenburg, that's hydrogen. We've identified the flag as 1049, 1049. We do have approximately 20 individual This stuff is colorless, odorless, smokeless. You can feel it, but if you can feel it, you're probably too close. Just the heat coming out of these light bulbs is enough to ignite it. The initial impurities were the paint that was on the tank, the fiberglass. Once all that burned off, the remaining hydrogen that's burning is, is clear. When we looked through the thermal imager, you could see it very clear. Um, our temperatures were going into the high readings. Um, and you could actually see the active flame. Uh, we have active cooling from a monitor from engine 119. We are cre increasing our uh, evacuation zone up to a half a mile around the uh, vehicle. If we did not do the evacuations, the aggressive evacuations that we did, we could have had a larger life loss potential. A busy off-ramp in Diamond Bar with traffic coming and going and a, a commercial strip mall with- Fast food businesses, gas stations, things of that nature. That were, were busy on a weekend. 
Uh, I think property damage would have been on the high side because of the proximity of where that vehicle was to all the commercial businesses in that area. What, what do you do at that point? Well, I knew the leak couldn't be stopped, but I knew if we didn't stop the fire, reduce the temperatures, that we would have more cylinder involvement and potential for a catastrophic failure. We had no idea which, how many released. When we pulled up, they were, were, they were releasing, and it was, uh, sounded like jet, jet engines just going. It was pretty intimidating. When you have a flammable gas, not necessarily a liquid because you have to worry about runoff with liquids. Sometimes it is liquids, but flammable gases, when you pull up, you want to see a lot of water because there's no reason not to flow it. There's no reason not to flow a whole lot of it in large diameter hoses. It was very important that we cooled uh, any of the remaining tanks that had not failed or had not reached their ignition temperature. That, that heating is too fast and exceeds the limits of that relief valve. So the only thing that's left is for that tank to fail. We knew we had a lot of water being placed on it, but we didn't know what it was gonna do if we didn't have water on it. We knew mitigation you know, was the next uh, course of action. The monitor was manned. Ideally, an uh, unmanned monitor would be perfect, but he and his crew were making no less than 10 direction changes on that water due to the wind. When the water was on the tank, three to 400 degrees, when the wind would blow the water off the tank, it would go beyond the, 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 the reading measurements of our thermal imager. We had a big, fast fluctuation of, of temperatures. Once we got that other uh, engine with a, the, the monitor in place, we kept a consistent three to 400 degree temperature in the area where it was burning, and I was very comfortable with that. We would cool, cool, cool. We would stop the flow of the monitors, hazmat team and, and at some point the techs from air products would come in they would do their entry they would determine where the temperatures were if they could go in and start mitigating uh, the release of the remaining product or if we had to continue flowing water before we were going to uh, evacuate any of the remaining cylinders that were full we had to make sure that our piping system was not going to evacuate hydrogen through a broken line to the existing tank that was burning. With the advent of hydrogen as an alternative fuel, we must be prepared to encounter emergencies similar to this in the future. I think hydrogen is here to stay. Hydrogen's coming, it's coming fast. It's a clean, effective way to produce energy. I think it's going to be a lot more commonplace. We have a lot more hydrogen rolling up and down the freeways. And more and more car companies are coming out with hydrogen vehicles. I know Toyota just put one out and there, there's gonna be many more to follow. They're taking fuel cells down to different products. You're gonna see generators. You're gonna see whole IT computer systems being run off in the middle of nowhere, basically on hydrogen. Although the threat was mitigated without injury or loss of life, as always on the fire ground, there remain lessons to be learned. With the advent of hydrogen technology and the rise in hydrogen vehicles, carriers, and pumping stations, now is the perfect time to begin discussing with your team members about how we can improve our approach to mitigating hydrogen fires. The Canyon incident, as with any incident, provides our department with the opportunity to learn, and there are areas that we can improve upon to ensure we are minimizing the risk to our team members and those in the communities we serve. There are a number of things that went right in the decision-making process for the Canyon incident. I want to discuss a couple of areas that we can improve upon tactically. As the first in engine company, we need to be sure to establish water supply early. Being dispatched to a commercial vehicle fire, we must be aware that the first in engine will most likely need large amounts of water to effectively tackle the threat. This tactic will set up the first and engine company for success from the start to ensure there is enough water to knock down the fire, or in this case, to keep water on the vehicle to cool the tanks over a long period of time. Second is a 360 size up of the vehicle. As we all know, we perform a 360 size up on structure fires. So why aren't we doing the same for large commercial vehicle fires? As a captain, this provides you with a full understanding of the scenario 
to determine what type of hazard you are working with. In this case, an initial 360 size up may have provided the first thing captain with the ability to spot any signage early that can indicate this was a vehicle carrying hydrogen. Each incident is unique, and after the canyon incident, I'm sure we'll never look at vehicle fires the same way again. Moving forward, we must use this as a launch point for discussion within our department. We want to ensure that we are constantly learning so that we may minimize our risk and perform to our highest ability in protecting the life and property of the communities we serve.